Yo, what's good, YouTube? Zam Crow here, aka Scoot, back with the International Draft Masters, and we have our season four, week number five match. And as you can see on the screen, we're taking on the uh, I, think, I think it's Lannister. Um, correct me if I'm saying that incorrect. Um, Ladius, coached by Eowyn. Um, again, correct me if I'm saying that incorrectly. Um, Eowyn, I believe that's right. Anyways, <laughs> very powerful squad. Um, originally was not uh, part of this uh, roster this season the league's roster that is and the Verd had to drop out I'm not sure personal things um, nonetheless we had a, a couple different coaches we were going to bring in but uh, one of them didn't get back to us quick enough and we were ready to get the season rolling so we went ahead and uh, contacted Ewan, coach of the Lannister Ladius, where he took over the Verge squad. He was able to make as many changes as he wanted, and this is the team he came out with. He's got Mew, Mega Kangaskhan, Terrakion, Klefki, Flygon, Keldeo, Alamomola, Shaman, Scolipede, and Umbreon. So uh, his Z-Move users are, as you can see on the screen, Terrakion and Flygon. Um, the bottom of the screen there our team hasn't changed we still have the same squad or probably won't change it's a really fun squad to build with and really fun squad to play with so far so we've got mega maul garchomp zapdos reuniclus crobat serena volcanion kofagagus mamoswine and hitmonlee where our gym of users are garchomp and hitmonlee and for this matchup in particular we're bringing mega maul um garchomp reuniclus Crobat, Serena, and Kofagagus. Um, I felt like this was the one of the best ways to combat his team. I've got a really, really fun and creative squad in my opinion. I've got some cool takes on some certain Pokemon here, and we're gonna go ahead and dive into it. So, Mega Mawa, our first mon. Um, normally, well, when we're building, uh, well, we just come up with a team. So it's not necessarily that I build them in the order that it's on screen. I've only got them on screen in the order that they were drafted. So, you know, going left to right, Mega Maul was, was drafted first, Cofactorist drafted last, so on and so forth. So, Mega Maul um, may not be the first Pokemon I started the squad with, but nonetheless going to be the first we start over with uh, in, in terms of talking about my squad here. So, we've got a brave natured Mega Maul because we've got a uh, Trick Room theme. Not, not a theme, but... Um, essence trick room squad here uh, half trick room half I mean the team can I guess function without trick room obviously but um, I do have two mons on here with trick room and three mons that function really well under trick room so that being said Mega Maul is a substitute breaker um, this thing has the power to break through my opponent's squad with just dual stab play rough and iron head are unresisted versus his squad and uh Everything should be basically O code or two hit KO'd, um, depending on what move I go for. And uh, I guess Iron Head into Play Rough or Play Rough into Iron Head will always two hit KO basically everything on the squad, too, outside of maybe like Alamola, Mew, and Klefki or something like that. But uh, realistically, they're not doing much back. Maybe Mew gets the Will O Wisp off. Maybe Mew has Flamethrower or Earth Power, Earthquake or Fire Punch or something like that. Um, of course, he's got other Pokemon that can run coverage as well, such as Mega Kangaskhan with Earthquake for Mega Maul, um, Scullipede with Earthquake, and then maybe Umbreon's got like Baton Pass so I can never get him Mega Maul for free, um, so on and so forth, things like that. Maybe Rocky Helmet on Mew, maybe Rocky Helmet on the Klefki, Alamola, maybe even Shaman. So, Lots of different options, and I felt like a sub dual stab set here with the Mega Maul would be really nice. And then he's got a really, really fat squad. Things like Mew, Alamomola, Shaman, Umbreon, Klefki. I felt like uh, felt like I could bring Pain Split, and it'd be very effective in this match. So we've got a brave natured Mega Maul here with 244 attack EVs. And uh, that thing hits like a truck, like I said. Um, basically, two hit KO and or close to it, everything on my opponent's squad. We have nearly max HP with 232 EVs in uh, HP, 28 EVs in defense, 
It allows us to avoid like a Oko from Flygon if it's like Jolly Max Attack. Um, allows us to avoid being Oko'd by things like Mega Kangaskhan's Earthquake, um, Scolipede's Earthquake, Keldeo's Hydro Pump, and uh, things like that. Terrakion's Close Combats. It's never going to take KO us or anything like that. We do have the Intimidate as well, so that we can Intimidate uh, Mega Kangaskhan. As you see on screen, we do have Cafagorius in this matchup, but uh, maybe maybe it's not the best switch in all the time and maybe I can go into my Mega Mawal get an Intimidate off and with my HP investment the Intimidate plus being a still type and resisting something like Return or Frustration or whatever it may be then Mega Kangaskhan won't be too big of an issue but uh, we'll see and again like I said Pain Split on there because of Alamomola we have the substitute because I felt like I could set up a sub versus something like uh, Umbreon or, or uh, Alamomola, potentially even Klefki. Um, obviously, I don't want to be Thunder Waved or something like that. But uh, if it doesn't have Thunder Wave, reveals Toxic and reveals its moveset or something like that, then of course I can go from there and maybe set up a sub on there. So, that being said, that's going to be our Mega Mawa, and we're going to dive into our Garchomp now, who is a uh, Z Move user this week. We've got the Ground EMZ. Of, of course, it's a Z Move user every week, but we're actually bringing the Z Move. And we've got the Ground EMZ with uh, Sub, Swords Dance, Earthquake, and Fire Fang. As you see on screen, my opponent has no resistance to Earthquake outside of Shaman, and I guess Flygon. I don't expect my opponent to bring Flygon. <laughs> but if he does, then uh, I do have you know other means of checking it. My Serena, Kapagoras can semi-check it. Mega Mawal can take an Earthquake and Oko with Play Rough, and so on and so forth. And of course, at plus two, uh, Garchomp's Fire Fang actually does quite a bit to Flygon as well. So the reason I got Fire Fang on here is because Klefki could have um, Magnet Rise, and of course Shaman is the only resistance to Earthquake. So, plus two, Fire Fang, doing quite a bit to Klefki and Shaman, going to be able to two-hit KO both. I've got Substitute and Swords Dance on this set as well. Can potentially set up a sub on something like Alamomola, maybe even the Klefki, potentially the Umbreon if it doesn't have Foul Play. If it has like uh, Wish, Protect, Baton Pass, Toxic, or something like that. I, that's a, pretty much an unset, but <laughs> it's possible, you never know. And... You know, some people can use Baton Pass in a way to where it can never become set up fodder. So, that being said, uh, we have enough speed to outpace Mew always if it's max speed to try to catch off, you know, catch something off guard with a Will O Wisp, such as uh, Mammal Swine or Hitmon Lee or my Garchomp, Mega Mawal. Then I want to be faster than that. Plus two Earthquakes won't knock out, but a plus two Tectonic Rage will. Um, Oko, everything on his squad outside of the Flygon, obviously, and maybe a defensive Shaman. Of course, it doesn't appreciate Fire Fang. Anyways, Gorchomp's able to outpace his entire squad outside of the Terrakion, Keldeo, and Scolipede. Um, all of which I can uh, deal with with my squad really, really well. Especially Keldeo because of the Reuniclus and the Serena. Um, Terrakion because of the Reuniclus and the Cafagorus, and even the Crobat to an extent. Scolipede because of the Crobat, because of the Cafagorus, Mega Mawal, and the Garchomp. So my team deals with uh, a lot of his threats really well. So it, it opens up holes for, you know, you know, all all of my mind, all of my minds appreciate each other in this matchup because they force my opponent to be super careful in his prep and to run certain coverage moves and things like that. So, next up we have Reuniclus, and again, like I mentioned earlier, we do have some techs, um, Pain Split on Mega Maul, uh, I don't know if I've ever saw that, but I think it's a pretty cool tech, and uh, it, it looks really good in this matchup. And another tech we have here, we have Trick Room Reuniclus with Psy Shock and Signal Beam, and then we have the Heal Block um, to prevent things like Mew, Alamomola, um, Umbreon, Shaman even from healing up while I'm under Trick Room, trying to stall under Trick Room with Roost or Wish or Synthesis or something like that uh, to those mods respectively. Um, I can heal block and prevent that from happening and then use my Trick Rooms uh, without being, you know, roosted on and constantly losing 
you know, turns for no reason, having to reset my trick room turns and my opponent getting chip damage on me and things like that. So uh, we do not have recovery on this thing. So we decided to go with the regenerator. The regenerator set in this matchup makes uh, pretty good sense to me. I can switch in on Terrakion and double out. Or if he, you know, switches in Umbreon on my Psyshock, then I can just switch out. I don't have to recover. I don't have to ever, you know, predict if my opponent's going to switch or not. I can just attack and then recover up on my switch outs and things like that. So we got Signal Beam there for the Mew and the Umbreon. And of course it hits the Shaman for super effective damage. If he is defensive, it's, uh, it does more than Psyshock does, obviously. And, uh... Psyshock basically hits the rest of his squad outside of Clef Key. I don't have a way to hit Clef Key, but with Mega Mawal, Garchomp, and the rest of my squad, I don't expect Clef Key to be too big of an issue, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, like I mentioned, this is a Trick Room Reuniclus. Allows Mega Mawal to go ham under some Trick Room there. And uh, we are mixed defensive to take on Terrakion and Kyodeo to the best of our ability. And <laughs> speaking of... Dragon and Kyodeo, I can outpace both of them with my Crobat. So Crobat's our next Mon, I'm going to be our fourth Mon in the team here. And we have a Charty Berry, you can actually take on Skullipede and Terrakion pretty well with a Charty Berry. And then we are like uh, max HP with mixed defenses. And like I said, just enough speed to out outpace the Skullipede. And uh, we are inner focus as well, so that Mega Kangaskhan cannot flinch us with Fake Out. So if he were to, you know... Uh, switch out to preserve So he could always you know get damage on me with fake out then if it doesn't knock me out Then I will be able to potentially knock him out anyway, which could be yeah, I guess that's situational, but it, it's something that I thought of I, I guess inner focus would have been cool too for something like sub Keldeo or sub Scullopy and threats like that, but uh, yeah ultimately decided on inner focus and we have brave bird toxic Taunt and Roost. So Toxic is really nice versus Mew. Um, Alamomola, Shaman can prevent, uh, can be very annoying of those mods. Same thing for Umbreon. Synchronize on Mew and Umbreon uh, won't affect me because I'm a poison type and I can taunt them from, you know, wishing, um, heal belling, roosting up, things like that, which is really, really, really nice for me. And then uh, we have Brave Bird as our move of choice to attack with. It's Terrakion for neutral damage, Keldeo and Scullipede for super effective damage, and the ever so annoying so far, Shaman for super effective damage. And gives us a really, really good switch in to Seed Flares and things like that so that we don't have to ever rely on something like Mega Maul to come in and take that big damage. And then for him to potentially have something like Hidden Power Fire or something like that for Mega Mawal just would be really difficult to deal with. I guess he could go Hidden Power Ice and have Earth Power though. I guess that makes more sense. Anyways, uh, speaking of Earth Power and any kind of Earthquake, we do have uh, Serena, which is a really, really nice check to Keldeo. Comes in on Alamomola and Shaman pretty comfortably as well with max HP and a lot of special defense, a little bit of defense and a little bit of speed to uh, outpace it, it, nothing specific just uh, just in case he you know wanted to try to speed creep my Serena with something uh, something slower of his then I would be able to have quite a bit of speed investment and then be able to outpace him which would be cool so I have a U-turn which gives me momentum um, if my opponent wants to switch in his own Shaman versus me I can uh, click U-turn bring out my Crobat and then threaten my opponent I can, if he wants to bring out Scolipede, I can also go into Crobat or maybe in Cofagrius or Mega Mawal and threaten him out that way. A lot of different options I can do here having the U-turn uh, initiative there. Um, of course, if he doesn't switch out and I U-turn out, then I still can just go into something appropriate. I've got Power Whip for Alamomola and the Keldeo, of course. And it hits the Flygon for neutral damage. And it does, I mean, it's got like really high base power. And uh, Serena has a really nice base attack stat at 120. So not weak whatsoever. And should be should be able to do the job. So Synthesis is our move of choice. We do need to recover up. Uh, sometimes we can't continuously come in without recovering up. And we do have Rapid Spin to get rid of Stealth Rocks and any potential Toxic Spikes or Spikes that Klefki or Scullipede might want to set up. And then we have uh, Queenly Majesty so that my opponent's priority won't go off. Things like Fake Out and Mega Kangaskhan won't work. Um, 
I believe that's about it, unless you count things like Quick Attack or Vacuum Wave, Mew, uh, Quick Attack, Terrakion, and things like that. Anyways, that's going to be Serena, and next up we have Cafagrius, which is a leftovers variant. We are max HP, max defense, with a uh, defense boosting nature, with a bold nature. And uh, this is a, <laughs> one of the only things that can come in on Terrakion as it goes for a Sword Stance and then survive something like a Stone Edge or a Continental Crush. <laughs> Uh, of course, after Stealth Rocks, it's a roll if I can survive the Continental Crush, but if there's no Stealth Rocks up, I should be able to survive uh, almost 99% of the time and uh, be able to get a Trick Room up and then go from there. I can get Reuniclus or Mega Maw Wall in. I can get uh, Serena in and go for a big, super effective Power Whip from there. Anyways, back to Cafagrius, we do have the mummy ability so anything that attacks us and makes contact will lose their ability we will gain their ability and they will gain the mummy ability we do have leftovers for a little bit of recovery um, passive recovery every turn and uh, trick room like I mentioned allows us to not only put Mega Maw Wall and Reuniclus in a solid position and even Serena at that in a decent position it also puts Cafagrius itself in a decent position with base 95 special attack this thing is isn't something that's you know considered weak and we do have shadow ball which is versus his squad unresisted outside of mega mall wall and the umbreon which my team deals with pretty well um in my opinion so far and of course mega canyon doesn't do much back to cafagoras unless it's packing coverage for it such as crunch and we have uh, toxic spikes as well so if he doesn't bring scolipede or if scolipede is beat down or even if uh I'm just trying to force in the Scolipede. I do have Toxic Spikes, which is really nice versus the squad. Beats down Alamomola, Mew, Mega Kang, like a fat Mega Kang's Kong, Shaman, Umbreon, and so on and so forth. It even, you know, hinders sub Keldeo, sub Terrakion, and things like that. And if he doesn't bring Scolipede, then <laughs> they're pretty much here to stay, unless he has something like Defog Mew, which would then in turn force him to defog his own. Uh, Hazards away if he decides to bring hazard stack himself, which I'm not sure if he will. I do have really good means of removal Anyways, our last move on Cafagrius is the memento So if he's got something in and we're able to get a trick room up and we don't necessarily need Cafagrius or we just want to uh, Start going to work <laughs> We can go into our Cafagrius and uh, like I mentioned set up a trick room and if the time calls for it We can just click memento and of course we will faint but our opponent's attack and special attack will drop and allow something like uh, Mega Maw Wall to come in, set up a substitute, or just be able to survive a hit and get two hits off to, you know, get the final knockout, or potentially Mega Guard Chomp's able to set up a sub and or a Swords Dance versus something, and potentially even Reuniclus able to just finish up the game like that. Uh, lots of different options here, and looks to be a fun match. My opponent's got a lot of different options too. He's got uh, two different stealth, lo stealth workers in Mew and Terrakion. So I know one, maybe both of them are coming. I think both of them will come. Uh, just naturally, Terrakion's really good versus my squad with Stone Edge and Close Combat. Um, unresisted. And if he can weaken something like Cafagrius and things like that. Anyways, um, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and get into the replay and see what happened this time. Alright, so here we are at the replay, and Ewen and his uh, Linester Ladius decide to bring Terrakion, Mega Kangaskhan, Mew, Alamomola, Klefki, and the Umbreon. So no Shaman, no Flygon. So I noticed immediately that Garchomp's Earthquake really goes in. Um, if I can get Toxic Spikes up and weaken the Alamomola, or potentially just put it in range of a Tectonic Rage, or just risk... <laughs> Risk, if it has an Ice Beam, set up a Source Sense on it and just uh, go for the Tectonic Rage from there. Um, so, like I mentioned, my opponent has two potential Stealth Rockers. He does bring the Mew and the Terrakion. I'm going to lean more towards the Mew having Stealth Rocks and being a defensive variant to take on uh, things. Uh, some, some of my offensive threats where he could uh, just have like something like Ice Beam and Earth Power for Guard Chomp and Mega Maw He could also have... Uh, Will-O-Wisp for things like Mimoswine and Mega Maw Wall, which are slower than Mew. Obviously, Garchomp would outpace Mew, so having Will-O-Wisp would uh, actually be potentially detrimental if I was to be able to set up a substitute while it went for the Will-O-Wisp and it didn't have Ice Beam. So, 
He could also leave with the Mega uh, Kangaskhan and go for the Fake Out into, you know, Return or uh, maybe if he predicts Michael Fagris to come in, he could go for the Crunch or something like that. Lots of different options here. Um, my opponent could lead with Klefki and Thunder Wave something. He could set up Spikes immediately. He could lead with Alamomola. He could also lead with uh, Terrakion, predicting one of my leads. Um, however, my two potential leads are Mega Mawal and Garchomp to get up Stealth Rocks, or Kefagrigus to get up Toxic Spikes, or Crobat and Serena to U-Turn out. So I have a lot of different options, and I felt like he would he would understand that. Of course, he's a, he's a pretty well-known battler, um, and my boy Sky holds him in high regards, so I'm going to... You know, treat him as if he is a very confident player and I'm gonna play my best as well. So, that being said, um, with all my potential leads, I felt like his best lead to combat all my leads would be his Mew, and I would just lead off with my Cafagrius here and try to set up Toxic Spikes since he does not have, uh, since he doesn't have the Scolipede. And with my Toxic Spikes, it might deter him from, you know, completely hazard stacking with Klefki. And that was the, that was the hope, hope here. He does bring in his Umbreon as I get up two layers of Spikes. And I'm going to go hard into my Mega Maw Wall. I get the Intimidate off, and I'm going to go immediately for the sub here, as I don't think Umbreon has anything in its arsenal to where it can break my sub after an Intimidate. So he goes into his Mega Kangaskhan. He does take the poison damage there, 6%. Um, with the Parental Bond, he is able to get 16% off versus me but we are able to put him in range here where he will die to poison the next turn and he just revealed earthquake and this was a tough turn here as you can see he does go for the crunch so fantastic play i thought about this turn for a minute um i did not think he would go for earthquake again so immediately i thought you know hey i'm gonna go into crobat or serena here my opponent's going for earthquake and i will either be immune or i will resist and if i go into serena i could rapid spin as well so that would have actually been a pretty cool play but since Alamomola is something that i'm going to struggle to break i wanted to make sure serena was healthy and since cafagrius wasn't something i necessarily needed um because if terrakion is choice scarf it can't lock itself into anything versus my squad and be completely safe as my garchomp could set up on stone edge and crobat can uh, take advantage of close combat so I felt like he would not be Choice Scarf Terrakion, and he could potentially be set up. And that's what I was most fearful of, but that's what I can revenge kill the easiest. Especially if he goes for close combat and lowers his defenses. And I do have a uh, Trick Room Essence on my squad, so if I'm able to get Mega Maw Wall behind a uh, Trick Room, then Terrakion's a non-threat anyway. So, my opponent does go for the Crunch here, predicting my switch out into the Cafagrius. As uh, I thought about that turn for quite a bit. And my, turn, my opponent obviously able to get the two hits there, and it does quite a bit of damage. However, he does bring in his Mew here, does become poison, knocks me out with the Ice Beam. I went for Trick Room there just in case. And here I'm going to go straight for the uh, Trick Room as he goes into his Clef Key. I'm going to hard switch out into my Mega Mawal and try to, uh, try to Pain Split up or something like that. Um, however, he does pull a switch into his Mew, and I'm going to reveal Sub here. And he goes for the Earth Power. So, um, what, what Pain Split does is it takes my opponent's HP and my HP, um, adds it together and then divides it by two and gives both of us the, the, you know, the average of, you know, the average of our HPs here. So, um, if he is not invested in special attack, which I'm not sure if he's able to be because Crunch would be able to two hit KO and Garchomp would obviously do a lot more damage, man, what's why? I think being max defense is the best case scenario here. I'm not sure if he's afforded to run special attack, but if he is not or has minimal special attack investment, then I will be able to pain split up and get out of range of an earth power here. So I'm going to pain split up, and my opponent actually pulls a switch out into the Alamomola, who <laughs> has a really fat HP and allows me to get, you know, put it really low, put me back really, really high there, gaining 71%. However, my opponent does get a critical hit on the Scald there. That would have put me around 50%, put me in range of Terrakion's Earthquake or Close Combat there. So I'm just going to hard switch out into the uh, Reuniclus here. And now uh, I'm starting to gain an advantage. I'm starting to gain a small advantage here. And I'm going to double out into my Serena here, predicting the Continental Crush. But my opponent makes a super solid play and goes for the Stone Edge there. 
or excuse me, the Swords Dance, as I switch out into my Serena, able to easily knock me out with a plus two close combat. However, he does have minus two defenses now and is in range of Brave Bird. So I'm just going to go for the Brave Bird. He does switch out into his Umbreon, saving his Terrakion to fight another day, and I am going to be able to taunt this thing. However, my opponent predicts that, go straight for the foul play instead of, you know, trying to throw off a wish or something like that. I am going to be able to roost up here, though. Um, so Crobat really putting in the work here. Able to roost up and slowly wear these Pokemon down. I do expect him to go for the Ice Beam. He did go for the Roost though, so really nice play there. I am going to be able to go back into my Reuniclus here. I could set up a Trick Room, but I do just double into my Garchomp, expecting his Clef Key to come in. And I am going to click Substitute here as my opponent goes for the Dazzling Gleam. And now I'm just going to throw off the uh, Tectonic Rage. Um, obviously nothing on his team could take it at that point, and it would one-shot the Clef Key and would probably do a whole lot more maybe even knock him out if he was shook a berry so i did just go for it there he does bring in the mew and to wear him down a little bit i'm just going to click sub i i think the best play was to continue clicking sub there and wait for him to hopefully roost up but it doesn't happen that way however toxic damage has built up quite a bit and i'm going to go for the trick room he is going to get uh Quite a bit of damage taken off there with 17%, and I'm going to heal block this turn so that my opponent can't roost. So heal block and pain split coming in clutch here, and we're able to go for the uh, excuse me, go for the signal beam. Almost a pain split. Go for the signal beam here, and it will two shot the Umbreon. However, he does reveal protect, able to get rid of one of my trick room turns there. However, we will be able to pick up the knockout with the following signal beam, and my opponent is forced to go into Mew or Terrakion once again, both of which I can set up a Trick Room versus, and I do just that. My opponent sets up a Swords Dance, however, I am going to be able to blow him back with the Psyshock here. He does bring in his Mew as his last mon, and I'm going to click Heal Block so that my opponent cannot roost. However, he does go for the Ice Beam. That was his best play because he'll bell or excuse me, Heal Block was my obvious play, and Ice Beam had the potential for the freeze, so I don't, you know, blame him for going for that. However, Reuniclus able to come through there with the Trick Room and the Heal Block with the Signal Beam. Very cool game. Um, my opponent almost shook me early with the uh, with the Crunch play with the Mega Kings Con because I thought about that play for a minute, and uh, man, I almost stayed in as well. We pick up a nice three zero victory here and move on to i believe three and two we've got two losses so far it's it's been tough uh we've got quite a few games left as well and uh first of all good game to ewing ewing <laughs> and uh next up we're going to be facing off against aki vgc so um really tough schedule it's going to be fun to face his squad next next week and hopefully we can uh, continue building and playing well and just having fun we're having so much fun with the squad so far but yeah it's gonna be it so let me know what you guys thought about the prep and the plays on both sides of the field leave a like comment and subscribe all the good stuff and i'll see you guys next time thank you for watching